going to talk to you about a little bit different kind of infrastructure. Um, this is infrastructure that's high above your heads, not on your freeways. So let's go to the next, next slide. Thank you. Um, so we're in a really interesting time for satellites. Unlike any other kind of infrastructure, satellites have suddenly started getting cheaper by two orders of magnitude. So if you look at the way satellites have been, well, since the days of the Cuban Missile Crisis, um, they've been huge, like the, the image on the, on the um, right of my slide there. And recently, we've had this little thing called the cell phone invented. Um, it turns out that if you take a cell phone and launch it into space, well, it's got a radio, and it's got a camera, and it's got a GPS, and, and it basically uh, becomes a satellite. Um, and if you look at what these guys up here in San Francisco and Planet Labs have done, it is very nearly, not literally, but very nearly a cell phone with a big lens on the front and a bunch of solar panels mounted on top, which means they can get the price of an Earth-observing satellite down to about a million dollars instead of hundreds of millions of dollars like it's, like it's always been. Um, next. So the problem that comes with this is all of a sudden you have, well, 100 times as much imagery coming down, um, which in a way is fantastic because we see a time three to five years from now when you will be able to get daily imagery of essentially every city in the world. Um, the problem is there's not enough people to look at those images. We've already got petabytes of imagery that simply sits on magnetic tape because no human has ever looked at it. The solution that we've been working on is amazingly similar to autonomous cars, which is basically let the AI do it. Um, and, it and we share a fundamental technology base because the fact that an autonomous car, the camera in an autonomous car can tell the difference between a pedestrian and a tree in another car uses the same kind of deep learning neural networks that we use when we analyze a satellite imagery and tell whether we're seeing a tree or a house or a car. So next. So for instance, one of the big applications we've done involves counting cars. Um, but we don't count cars in the small. If you want to count cars in one parking lot, you can just hire a human to do it. If you want to count cars in a thousand parking lots, maybe you offshore it. But we want to count cars in a million parking lots because we want to count cars at every US retailer, ultimately at every US retailer every day. So we trained a neural network. Um, to understand what a car looks like. And next, once you do that, then you can process a million images. So we went through with some of our satellite partners and pulled every image they've ever taken of parking lots. Um, and, and like I say, there were many of those images that have sat on magnetic tape since they were taken and had never been looked at. But now we can tell you where people park. And more interestingly, next, uh, more interestingly, we can also tell you what's happening with retail over time. So this is a, an example of Cole's department store. Um, and we've taken just one year of data. We have six years of data. Um, we've taken one year of data here, and you can see Christmas. Um, you can see the circle is probably, the type's probably too small. You can see Black Friday as the big peak on the top. Um, you can see day of week variations. Um, un unsurprisingly, people shop more on Saturdays. Surprisingly, at Kohl's, people shop more on Wednesdays. It took us a while to figure that one out. It turns out they have a senior discount day on Wednesdays. Who knew? And so there's a um, major secondary peak in traffic on Wednesdays at Kohl's. So let's go next. Um, we can also see weather effects. So we can see in the Northeast where, as you may, the people that live there, I'm sure know, the last couple of winters have been brutal. People don't shop. Um, here the northeast is shown in black, the rest of the U.S. is shown in red, and you'll see a big drop in the northeast versus the rest of the U.S. in the really cold winters. Now there's a lot of debate if you watch the talking heads on TV about whether or not all that traffic's gone to the internet or whether in fact they shop later, but since we're looking at a million parking lots, we can tell you that in fact they all come back. Um, so in the spring, after the cold winters, the snow melts, everybody goes shopping again in the northeast. Let's go to the next slide. We can also look at tremendous numbers of other industries. Um, so one of the reasons the price of oil is so volatile is that crude oil is stored in every country in the world. Um, it's, a, it's a very chaotic market in that, in that nobody knows how much oil is in all these oil tanks. When demand goes down in China because the economy slows, when supply goes up in the US because of fracking, it takes six weeks before the IEA can give you a report as to what's happening. But the interesting thing is from the space, all of these tanks are visible. 
So we can see the shadows, because the lids fill it with the oil, we can see the shadows cast by the fixed sides of the tank on the lid. And using AI, we can determine how high the lids are. So we can now track every day a significant fraction of the 18,000 oil tanks in the world and produce an ongoing number of how much oil there is, which we expect will ultimately help, not only help our immediate clients who are, who are investors, but also ultimately help stabilize the market. We can also track fracking itself, um, because if you look at the picture here um, in the upper right, it, it look, looks kind of like the Barlin and Bailey Circus came to town when they're fracking. Um, but, but amazingly, that data is not available. There's, there's thousands and thousands of fracking pads across the US, and there is no good source of data of how many of those are being completed. Similarly with solar, this is a tiny part of the biggest solar plant in the US. Um, there's very limited data on how fast those are coming online and, and on how to maintain them. Uh, next, please. We've also started looking at urban development. Um, this is the big picture here is a picture of Nanjing, and we just ran the same car counter, and it was a car counter that we developed on US parking lots, and, and we said, what the heck, let's just run it on Nanjing. So we took some of the images we had from Nanjing, and we just ran the car detector on it, and we can see over time the growth of cars in China, we can see where the roads are, we can actually see in a, in a, in a snapshot fashion where the traffic jams are. Um, nighttime lights are also a really interesting source. There's some fascinating work that suggests that you can actually predict or at least measure objectively the growth of an economy, um, especially in the third world, by looking at the development of nighttime lights. Not the greatest thing for an astronomer, but, but a great thing if you're trying to track infrastructure development. Uh, next, please. We also start, we've also been looking at sustainability and climate change. Um, this is interesting from a couple points of view. One is we, we have a project going with the World Resource Institute where we have hopes that we may be able to actually predict the risk of deforestation. And the reason we think this is possible is that you don't go out with a hatchet into a virgin rainforest and cut it down. There has to be some way to get into the forest. And in high resolution satellite imagery, we believe we'll be able to see road development and the development of right-of-ways that allow people actually to access the forest and create a risk map. And this is now a funded project with the WRI to use AI and satellite imagery to create a risk map of where deforestation is most likely in the world so that folks can take that into account in setting policies and in taking action to try to reduce that risk. Uh, next. We've also been looking with some folks at the World Bank at how we can use satellite imagery, imagery for poverty mapping. Um, it's an interesting problem that, that you have if you're trying to fight global poverty, that precisely the parts of the world where poverty is the least of a problem is where the data is best. <laughs> and precisely where you most need data to understand where poverty is, is where it's the hardest to send people out with clipboards uh, to measure that poverty. So usually the data on where poverty is is inevitably out of date. So we've been looking at four different satellite metrics that we believe will correlate with poverty. Um, one is just the density of buildings, and here we're showing a, an AI algorithm that's running just to simply be a building detector. Um, and we can compute the number and size of buildings per square kilometer. We can also compute car density. Um, this is an interesting image because this is Colombo, the capital of Sri Lanka. There is no map there. That it, you can see the roads, but you can see the roads because the car detector is running. So we're essentially using the car detector as a road detector. Um, but the main point of the image is that we can look at car density and use that to correlate with poverty rates. We're also computing agricultural productivity, which we can get from a multispectral analysis of the satellite imagery. We can tell basically how green the fields are at different times of year. And building height. Um, building height's an interesting problem because we're looking from above. So if you're looking from straight up, it's not obvious how you tell how tall a building is, but in fact what we do is we look at the length of the shadows cast by the buildings. Um, so we know the exact time the satellite images were all taken, so from the building shadow length, we can use a little bit of trigonometry and compute the building height. Um, next, please. So overall, the interesting opportunity we all have here is to figure out what are we gonna do with satellites that are 100 times cheaper what are we gonna do with images of every city and ultimately every spot on the earth every day? Um, and how are we going to utilize the power of the artificial intelligence that we have um, in order to understand institutions, in order to understand trends? Um, I should add that, that all of the imagery we're dealing with and all of the satellite imagery, even the stuff coming in the future, it does not allow you to track individual people. Um, so it's important to think of this as a way to track trends, as a way to track counts of cars, counts of trees, um, and ultimately characterize socioeconomic trends at scale uh, in a way that's never been possible before. So thank you very much.